On this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Mike is rolling solo with Ammon Lang. He is a Marine MP, and we're going to get into his background, what he's up to now, post-Marine Corps career. Real quick, couple of admin notes. Go ahead, check out our Facebook page. We invite you to like the page, at Cigars and Sea. We're also on Instagram and Twitter, at Cigars and C. Also, be sure to check out fiveparagraph.com. It is brought to you by Cigars and C Stories. We created the Five Paragraph business plan based on the operations order that we all know and love. Rah. Right now, the book is available on Amazon. Go ahead, pick up the Five Paragraph business plan, the action-oriented business management tool for leaders. So, without further ado, we are going to get rolling with Mr. M. and Lang, who, uh, who is a fellow Marine. We served together in the police advisor teams. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into our experiences downrange. We're going to talk about what he's been up to post-Marine Corps uh, because he's an adventurer. He is. He also has an engineering mind. He's a deep thinker, and uh, he's he's got a fantastic sense of humor. So welcome to Cigars and Sea Stories, Mr. Ammon Lang. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, dude. This has been a long time coming. For sure. You keep harassing me. I and do. I keep putting it off, and finally you just told me to do it. So here I am. Well, and I got to tell you why, though. It's because <laughs> God's honest truth, I really believe what your mission is and what you're doing is really cool, and more people should know about it. So let's just go straight into what you're up to right now. What is your organization? Where can people find you? Um, so we're kind of a, a beginning magazine called Onward Expedition, um, and we're, we're pretty guerrilla right now. So the only place you can find us is on Facebook. Just type in Onward Expedition, two words. Uh, there'll be a picture of a buffalo. You can't miss it. And so what we are is, um, so right now we're just veterans, but that's because we haven't got enough people onto our team, but we're just a bunch of adventurers who we just want to get out there and experience things and share it with people and get more people, you know, to, to go out in their local community and just explore it. Um, I, I kind of pitch it to my people as we're like National Geographic is got really beautiful pictures and they go awesome places, but they're, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of like a textbook. Like they're a great place to learn, but they don't really necessarily tell the story. So we're like a cross between National Geographic and Rolling Stone, I guess. <laughs> nice. See, and I like this premise because it kind of hits on a string that's fine in between uh, uh, two different mediums. You have adventurers who go on and catalog their journeys, and then they wind up becoming books and all of these other things. And then you have communities of people who share in similar adventures, uh, hiking, camping, you know, it's niche in that regard. What I like is you're involving people and inspiring folks in order to create their own stories that coincide with the adventure that they're going on. And I think that that's fun and unique, and it's something that it's it, it doesn't require the same amount of commitment as writing a book, and it does bring out that adventure spirit that can be carried across to other fellow veterans. And, I mean, it gets you out and about. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's you just... Know, that's, yeah. Sorry for cutting you off. No, man, you're good. Um, You know, and that, that was kind of the thing is... You know, we you know, I spent six years in the Marine Corps, which was was pretty adventurous. It was something new almost every day. And then you get out, and you know, kind of life sets in and gets re- gets kind of monotonous. So you got to get out there and you know just see the world again, and, and you know visit people and go to places. Plus, it's a good excuse to visit friends. Right there, you go. Well, and you just hit on the on the next little widget, so to speak, that I love about all of this. I'm one of those guys who enjoys a good road trip. So if you're chilling in a cool city. Or a fun, I would rather go out to somebody's ranch or go hunting or go out to a national park or something crazy like that. I don't know. Some retreat on that type of guy. But I enjoy bouncing around and experiencing yeah. those other adventures and then bringing it to the forefront. We've got a couple other guys who are like that. Have you ever listened to Wade Spann? Uh, no, I don't think so. He's been on Cigars and Sea Stories, I believe, more than once. But, uh,. I, I, I've gone on a couple of adventures with him. He's got a pretty badass Mustang that we took through Fairfax, Virginia, illegally. Oh, nice. But uh, it was, it was, yeah, it was one of those things. It was like, all right, let's see how fast this thing goes through those twisties. Let's do this. <laughs> But it's, you know, he's one of those guys. He did this thing called Span Across America, right? A little, yeah. little pun. Well, very punny. Uh, yeah. But he's a fellow adventurer and road warrior. And it's like, dude, you can, I mean, depending on 
how adventurous you are, you can do it relatively inexpensive, right? I mean, are you trying to do these adventures like on the cheap and you're really going for the experience as a as a whole? Is that kind of how you're playing it through? Um, yeah, I would say 90% of our, well, probably 100% of our trips so far um, have been just, just roughing it. Um, we, we like to go out to Moab uh, and just camp. Mm-hmm. And it's beautiful because there's no, there's no cities out there. And we go on this trail that's like 120 miles. Um, so it's like all, it's just you. There's no services out there, it, no lights, no people. And you just get to hang out with your friends and stare at the stars and, you know, kind of decompress from the world. It's pretty great. That's fantastic. I need some of that. Yeah, everybody does. The Dude, the other day, I was honestly feeling sentimental about Tony Ann Palms. Can you believe oh. that shit? No, I don't. Ah. <sighs> God. I hated myself for it. I mean, I've I've only been to 29 Palms for like that 30 days, but my, my first duty station was in Yuma and oh my God. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that, that was the worst two years of my life was there. <laughs> now, was that where you started your military career? Um, I originally started it in the Kansas National Guard. Um, because we didn't have a Marine recruiter and I was from Northwest Kansas where my town was 500 people. So Marine wasn't even on my radar. I didn't even know what the Marines were, but I knew what the army were. Um, and so I did that. I went to basic. I, then I went to AIT to be an armorer, which is a joint school. And so half the instructors were Marines. And, uh, I just kind of immediately knew I was like, well, I'm in the wrong branch. Uh, <laughs> right. <'Cause> it, <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, cause we were treated like, We were treated like children in the army. We still had drill sergeants and like, I didn't really respect my superior. I don't know. I was kind of a garbage soldier, but I kind of felt like everybody around me was also a garbage soldier. I just felt like we were all just kind of, um, for my mom listening, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to do Marine talk now. They were just kind (laughs) of, there's just, everybody just seemed like real pieces of shit. Like people doing cocaine in the barracks. And I was just like, what the fuck, you know? Um, uh, my grandfather fought in, uh, world war two and Korea and, you know, and this was right. not his army. That's for certain. <laughs> that man is a badass. My head is off to him. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Um, yeah. And my step, my step grandfather, he was a green beret in, in Vietnam. And so, so everybody was like army, like right. Marine wasn't on my radar, but the Marines just carried themselves totally differently. Um, they just, they kind of had this air of fuck you, I guess. And, uh, I just real I wanted to be like that. So that's how I became a Marine. Fuck. Yeah. Who I, doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> Hell went, yes. back to, went from an E4 back to an E2 and we had to go back to basic. Good times. <laughs> right. I tell people all the time, I'm like, look, man, you don't get it. You go into another branch and then you go into the Marines. You're going back through boot camp. No, 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 no. Like, yes. Oh, yeah. There was a guy in my SOI class who was SF and he was an E8 and wound up going into the Marine Corps. What, did he have went, an ITB? Jesus. And went to fucking boot camp. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, he was legit as fuck. And like, what are you doing here? He's like, dude, I just always wanted to be a Marine. We did some badass shit in the berets, and this is what I want to do. And, you know, he picked up like meritorious corporal walking out of SOI, but still E8 to E4. Like, Jesus Christ, man. (laughs) Yeah. Dude. He's going to pick up quick, though. He's got all that time and time and service. (laughs) Right, exactly. So, I mean, you know, he probably was a gunnery sergeant within, like, two years or some shit. But, I mean, he was going through the infantry training battalion with us. I mean, he was he wanted to be a grunt in the Marine Corps. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, good on you. Ugh. <laughs> dude, Gross. Dude, you're a glutton for punishment if that's what you, you know. You probably wound up going to the drill field. Probably. Ugh. 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 That, yeah. So, you went to probably. Yuma as your first duty station in the Marine Corps, and then what? Which, which was extremely depressing. Yeah, fuck um, yeah. That place kind of sucks a lot. A, a whole lot. And I kind of I got lucky in a way because I didn't want to be an MP at all. I wanted to be infantry in the Marine Corps. But I joined like late in the year. So the Marine Corps is like, well, you can put that as your first choice. And then I was like, all right, security forces. And, and then um, the way the Army does MP is totally different than how the Marine Corps does MP. Um, Marine Corps, it's like two specialized fields. There's They're totally different sides of the houses. They never interact, um, really. And so Yuma was this garrison pogue nightmare. It was just a sea of high and tights 
and just just the garrison bullshit that you can imagine, just the worst of it everywhere because it's an air station. And that's all it is. And so everyone's walking around trying to out Marine the next Marine, which means following all the rules and just being a general dickhead about everything. Um, and so when the monitor came around, I was like the third person in the door and I was like, please, please, sir, Master Sergeant. <laughs> I need to go to a field unit. I need to be a Marine. I need to be a real Marine. Cause up to this point, I hadn't felt like a Marine at all. I'd just been doing crap. Um, and he's like, well, where do you want to go? And I was like, any field unit. And he's like, well, which one Dick? And I was like, well, <laughs> uh, first Marine please. And so that's where I got to go. And that was the most polar opposite of anything you could imagine in the Marine Corps. Like, like every day was shitbag Friday. Um, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Um, cause they had no time for, for any of this garrison BS. It was all about the mission that, cause the, um, MP company, uh, first Marine division was one of the highest deployed units, um, throughout Iraq. They did a lot of convoy security every August they were gone. Um, so they had quite a bit of experience and as a result of that, and just being a small company inside of a huge division, we got away with whatever we wanted. You know, we wanted to go to the field. We went to the field. We wanted to shoot machine guns. We shot machine guns. Um, so that's where we were proficient, but our home life was super skate. It was amazing. <laughs> so what you're telling me is, uh, over in the fleet, were you, were you PMO? I mean, you guys were deploying a lot. The team was going a lot. Were you part of the rotating element that was deploying all the time? Um, so uh, so when you're at PMO, you're just PMO. That's all you'll ever be. There's no opportunities to deploy out of PMO um, because it's a non-deployable unit. Um, as where the MP company at a first Marine was just a field unit. And so that's all they ever did. Um, and so that uh, company had been deployed just continuously. Um, so they had a lot of experience. And, you know, they'd done this mission that we were going to do, um, you know, the PAT mission. Uh, well, anyways, so I ended up getting over there and not even, like, I don't even think we were there for like four or five months or whatever. Um, we get basically word that, um, I think it's 3-7, maybe 3-7 and then 1-5 needed MPs for PAT missions. And so, you know, not only had that been the reason I went there, but everybody who hadn't deployed your turn sort of thing. Um, unless you're Brock, um, who we both know, and that was actually his third deployment. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. Once to Iraq and that was his second time to Afghanistan. So, but, but yeah, so it was, a, it was a really good, really good company that was really specialized. And, and then we got over, we got over to one five and it was just, Garrison hell again. <laughs> <laughs> I remember because we had an unofficial motto at MP company and it was lowest of the low. And so we all had like gunny rolls and like low blue blouses, long hair with like recon fades, um, covers that were too large. As I'm sure as I'm sure you saw us when we walked up looking like, you know, <laughs> right. Um, and that's, that's kind of how we were trained, um, at MP company. They, I don't, without giving away too many trade secrets, you know, the, the three rules of MP company were, um, always look cool, never get lost. If you get lost, look cool doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and um, I thought I thought it was great working with you guys because, uh, frankly, I was coming out of a combined anti-armor team, and then we had done specialized training with MPs when I was over in Quantico, so I kind of understood a little bit. You know, they were a special react team, and yeah. so they had a really cool job. SRT is just awesome, in my opinion. Uh, they're one of those non-deployable, you know, unless they rotate out to a field company, but yeah, they're cool. They have a really cool mission, and they incorporate boats and ATVs, and there's just all sorts of stuff, and we work together as precision marksmen and stuff like that, and then I wound up, you know, seeing the PAT as an opportunity to work with a number of different MOSs and get away from the whole infantry rigmarole to where, I love being a grunt, don't get me wrong, but it was a hell of a lot more fun working with NCOs and up. You know, really, the, yeah. the only guys that were under NCO were, we had what? A couple Say. of corpsmen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Say, but yeah. he got promoted overseas, didn't he? Yeah. And plus, that was his second deployment anyways. Right. Most most MPs who were a, a Lance Corporal were kind of like the infantry. They were a victim of victim of the MOS, not necessarily that they sucked at life. Right, right. Well, and it was, it was cool because you guys knew a hell of a lot more about the weapon systems than I thought you were going to know. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
fucking a um yeah it, you know it was it was such a weird because when we first met up with you guys um you know first off infantry hates mps in all shapes and forms until they know better um but then again infantry hates everybody until they know better and so when we showed up you guys were trying to like big dick us and like like oh oh your mp's got to come off the gate and you guys were kind of being dicks about it and then i remember there was a couple of times where we got we made you guys look like total assholes and <laughs> got you to shut up <laughs> right and <laughs> especially yeah i remember another time when brock somebody was harassing him because he was an mp and he's about his mission and talking about afghanistan and he was like have you ever been to afghanistan They're like well no but i went to iraq and he's like oh that's cool i went to iraq also and i did this mission in iraq and i did it in afghanistan last time and now i'm doing it again stop telling me what to do <laughs> right Right. Um, well, and that was the funny thing about it is it's always that play. I think a lot of people misunderstand the way that we're creating this oil and water mix and now we're supposed to integrate with one another. And you know how it is. The hardest thing about being oh, yeah. a police advisor or any advisor is actually integrating your... And we realize this in, in training. I think what wound up happening, you know, not to sound cheesy, is we figured out our own individual strengths and weaknesses in our given expertise as far as MOSs are concerned throughout yeah. the advisor training cell. And a lot of the, you know, we can't necessarily go into a lot of the different training that we did while we were there, but it was different training that we had not been through. And what I thought was cool is some of the training that we are, we were going through, the other guys who had deployed doing PATs or PMTs, which are the, it's the next, well, the precursor or, or the predecessor to the, uh, to the, uh, PAT were mitt and pit teams. And then they wound up saying, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. Now we're going to have an integrated mission with these different MOSs. And then they're going to go through this advisor package, which we wound up coming together as a unit through those different, you know, kind of evolutions and the fact that we were never around our own unit. Never. <laughs> I think we trained with our own unit on two ops. That was Steel Knight. No, it was three ops then. Because it was Steel Knight, the battalion Finex that we did. Remember that? How we were rotating around? Oh, yeah. We bought, uh, we bought mcdonald's and made those mortar guys real jealous yes <laughs> yes uh, they, yeah yeah we were out dude. Times. well and remember we were rotating around from the tomato patch anybody who's ever been on camp pendleton knows that there's this area on base called the tomato patch which burns every other year but it's right there on the christianitos entrance and you can actually go and stay there like there's a little campground there and other shit if you want to see marines in pain but we're just right. you know sleeping on the side of the road watching all you fuckers drive by probably couldn't see us because we were wearing camouflage <gasps> cover covered in dew oh god okay. <laughs> Well, and it was, you know, Camp Pendleton's really not that bad. Every once in a while, it gets really oh. fucking cold. Every once right. in a while, it pisses on you. Right. I was in Yuma. I mean, Camp Pendleton Man. was beautiful. <laughs> Camp Pendleton was a vacation. Um, did you do Bridgeport? No, never did Bridgeport. Yeah. See, I didn't do it with 1-5. I was happy to get... So I kind of like worked it just right. When I was leaving 3-7, they were deploying to Korea. And I was going to Quantico. Sweet. Because I didn't want to go to Korea. I was just like, fuck that. And then wow. when I came back to the fleet, uh, one five was coming back from Bridgeport. And I'm like, yes, yes. Because I really enjoyed doing Bridgeport, but the package that they did was not Bridgeport. Oh, it was like the, just the haze me fest that's too short to learn anything? Well, it's like the battalion ops. Oh, that sounds gay. Where you're out there in the lowlands and you're just but about a jamming it around. Yeah, yeah, that sounds real dumb. It, yeah. <laughs> the stories coming off that one were just like, yeah, no. I'm really glad that I missed that training evolution. Yeah. See, yeah. Anyway, it yeah, was see, funny. It was. It's, see, that's how the infantry, I think, is, is different. Um, the infantry, I don't want to say the infantry is not smart, because I believe the infantry has just as many smart individuals as any MOS. Um, uh, it's, it's the way that infantry is designed. They're not allowed to, I guess, think outside of these parameters. And so it's very kind of regimented. And as we were coming from the MP side, which is... You, you're the you're the guy who's in charge generally. If you're if somebody called you to a place, you're generally the guy in charge because you're a cop. Um, <laughs> right. And so you have to you have to make decisions, and they you know and and we learn you know very early on in our careers you know there's letter of the law and spirit of the law you know and so you better do spirit of the law most of the time unless you want your ass kicked. 
Um, <laughs> right. So, so I think once we kind of, cause, cause the, cause you guys were very like regimented and you kind of were like, what the, you know, you were, you, you wanted to regiment us, I think. And then you kind of saw what, what the, what the badge, I guess, can give you cover from. And you guys kind of assimilated because at the beginning, when people would come up to yell at us because our packs were just in a big pile, like a big harem, we're all just laying on them. Um, in the beginning, people would come up to yell at us and they'd be like, who the fuck are you? And we'd be like, oh, we're MPs. And they would just be like, fuck. And then I remember somebody over on your side were like, but we're infantry. And then you guys got yelled at because <laughs> you should know better. <laughs> Right. So I think I think after that, you guys just were like, you you let us talk, and they're like, no, they that's fine. They'll get us out of trouble because that's all we did. We just skated all the time. Oh, we definitely used it to an <laughs> advantage. See, I was always the guy who like, I was the guy right who 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 would write Sar Penny on the side of his canteen cup like i was the guy who was like why can't we do big boy rules and then it winds up being one of these things where it's like you've got to carry out the plan of of, of the day essentially you know i want to say the plan of attack but that's not it no and oh my god there was some stupid shit this is always just what guys always wind up not necessarily complaining about but where the bad times always came through was it was like, yeah, this is coming down from higher. One of the most difficult things in the entire world was trying to go back and forth in between that company office and, well, not the company office, but wherever PAT was located. And then try, because you're like, oh, fuck, we have to do stupid shit. Like, this is going to be fucking stupid. And some of the leadership that we were dealing with and some of the other things that we were trying to tackle, oh man, I think that it's always like this and you know how it is, especially in the Fleet Marine Force. There is a lot of times where guys don't realize how much bullshit is mitigated before it actually hits everybody and like where it lands on the spectrum of like, ah, I've got to fucking push back against leadership on this or yeah, this is really stupid, but it will probably help later on. Oh man, I hate I'm the guy who loves, you know, okay, we're all going to kind of figure out this template, right? So that we understand it and then we can communicate in it and then we're going to go forth and slay bodies kind of a deal. And I enjoyed that. That was one of the things that I really liked about all of our field ops is we actually got to do a lot of cool shit where other guys are dealing with qualification from other instructors and stuff. We were kind of left to our own devices in a lot of different ways. Like remember when PMO got called out because we were doing medical training in the middle of the night? Were you there for that one? Um, I don't know. Do you remember that? We were screaming in the middle of the night, the PMO wound up coming out to our boss. And it was like, oh, you- <laughs> yeah, it was over by the highway. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I do remember that in Horno. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we told him to fuck off. <laughs> and we were like, what? and then like, why are you doing that? And it's like, because it's good training. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Good training. Nah. Remember, we used to play that, remember we used to play that stupid game where you would like put your fingers over your eyes and then, you know what I'm talking about? Put your fingers over your eyes. Yeah, so you would make like an OK sign yeah. with your with your hand, and then you'd flip it upside down with both hands and put it over your <laughs> eyes. So you're looking through them. Do you remember us playing that game? <laughs> I, I mean, I think you know it was one of those stupid things that we did. Yeah, because if you if you looked at somebody and they were doing that, you had to immediately sit down. You had to touch your ass to the ground and sit yes. back up. <laughs> didn't matter what you were doing, carrying a fifty cal didn't matter. <laughs> Coming out of a house in full gear doesn't matter. You got to do it. And we would always just kind of like gaff it off as like, no, we're doing situational <laughs> awareness training, and it worked for for quite a while. But then I remember we were at a mount town, like the big one, and we were awesome. Like we were stellar, and we were so good that. Um, like Lieutenant was like complimenting us and telling us how good we were doing. He's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm really confident that, you know, we're going to do great on this deployment. You guys are doing great. And then you told Rhodes to go get the radio out of the, uh, uh, Matt V. And so he like takes off and we're still like talking about, you know, after action kind of stuff. And then fucking Rhodes stands up in the turret and does that. He goes, Hey guys, is this the right radio? (laughs) And so we all look and we're like, Oh, you got us. And we sit down and the look of disappointment (laughs) on, on uh, yeah. Gunny G's face when yeah. we did that. <laughs> and then he like yelled at us like like we were his kids. He's like, guys, come on. Like we were doing uh, so good. And then you had to ruin it. Oh so man. So disappointed. So good. <laughs> we're like, we're so good. Oh man. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's not like we were running around being badasses all the time. More often than not, we were fucking around. Fucking around. Just, yeah, just... 
Such that's good what shots. you got to do, though, because this goes back to that always look cool. Right. Because as a, as a PAT member, so it was me, two other Marines, and a corpsman living with 50 ANCOP in a compound adjacent to Alpha Company. Um, and so that meant me, as a corporal, has to make big boy decisions about what we're doing that day, where we're going, you know, you know, I'm in charge over here. I'm in charge of these, of these crazy people who I can't understand anything they're saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> vice versa. <laughs> and vice versa. It's a big game of charades. 10 for patrol. Um, and so you got to, when you walk over to Alpha Company, you can't go over there looking frazzled. <laughs> Right. You got to look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> right. So that's what we right. do. And you kind of have to have that that attitude of like, yeah, I'm cool. What are you going to do about it? Like, because you got to get water for these guys. I've never had to requisition supplies. You know, <laughs> how do you get HESCO barriers? I don't know. Just go to Nole. Start talking to people. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who do I right. talk to? <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> Go to okay. Nole and start talking to people. Oh my God, yeah, that's, that's solid. What I did. That, that's what I did. That's an that is that is in the admin and logistics paragraph. In case you're following along at home, uh, just go to Nole and start asking people, and start you'll asking. get whatever you need. It's gonna be fun. Well, and we never wore rank ever. Right. Anywhere we went, we didn't wear rank. And so that was probably the worst part. It was also the best part because I could I could just talk shit to people and they had no idea. But like you'd show up to places and you're like, hey, I need these. And they'd be like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, um, I'm with the PAT team. They're like, yeah, what is that? <laughs> right. My name is Corporal Lang. OK, Corporal, I know we're at parade rest. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, man. See, that was one of those things where for the for the listeners at home, just a quick little backstory. What wound up happening was we got I think it was actually in country before he found out that we were going to Kajaki might have been shortly before. I can't remember that time frame, but we found out our team was going to go up up north. So we wound up being split throughout the majority of the deployment. So it was weird. It was like we were training together as a cohesive unit that were doing our separate things. So they would break us up in between the battalion exercises. And then when we went overseas, I mean, I was detached from the unit the entire time, the whole time. Just our PAT was. Even when we came back to Sankum, we were with 1-6. So were you detached or were you with 1-5? You were with um, Alpha. I was, um, the PATs kind of rolled like like the cat guys. Um, we just went where we needed to be and... So I was over with Alpha because, you know, Alpha's going to go out there and, and kick ass every day. And so who's going out there to, well, at least be out there. That's the ANCOP. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, as much as we can get them to to kick ass, I guess. Right. <laughs> which which is, I mean, it was, it was really, it was really a fun time um, because, you know, I was left to kind of my own devices of, you know, all right, well, we're going on a patrol. Cool. I'm going to go take a nap now. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> like I didn't, ha- we didn't have to pull post or anything like that. Cause we, we kind of came to this conclusion that, you know, if there was only four of us and, and 50 and, you know, 50 of these guys, and if they're going to kill us, they're probably just going to kill us all. So why lose sleep over it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Yes. That's we slept fantastic. in the same, it wasn't even like we had our own area that we could fortify. It was a big, like, it was a big just building with HESCO dividers like cubicles. And these guys had grenades. We're like, yeah, you know, I mean, if they really want to kill us, they're just going to do it. (laughs) Right. They'll just frag out. (laughs) Yeah. And hopefully that machine gunner over there on Alpha just also kills all of them from there. You know, that's the best we can hope for. Right. We'll be fine. (laughs) We'll be fine. And we were. (laughs) Oh, that's so Viking. So B.A. We're, so we were talking about Vikings earlier, and I'm watching this Netflix series. I've already binge-watched it. You know, it's like late-night TV for daddy kind of a deal. All the kids yeah. are asleep. I finally get to sit down. Boom. I'm like, oh, yeah, what's this Norseman? And I kind of thought, similar to you, okay, this is going to be like a knockoff to Vikings or something like that. Dude, it's just, it's hilarious. It's one of those where it's just dry and it's funny. There's a lot of brutal shit in it. Don't get me wrong. It's it, you know. There's some fucked up moments in it. Uh, but it I, they gotta have veteran writers on the staff or something like that. <laughs> I just don't. I don't know because it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I would. You know, uh, with here's a quick spoiler alert. Okay, within the first, I don't know, ten minutes of the first episode, a guy shoves his finger up his asshole and then wipes it around the inside of the gum so this dude 
<laughs> it's fucking hilarious. It's, I think you're just watching porn. Uh, what's it? Well, I mean, <laughs> my pants are off, uh, but they're always optional. I will tell you that much. Pants are always optional. Trousers in this household. I will tell you that much. Mm. Mm. But dude, it was funny though, because it was like, dude, if I was a Viking, that's how it would be. They're very, they're very dry about like, yeah, we're going to go out and rape and pillage. Like, okay, that's what they do. They're just, they're Vikings. <laughs> It's one, of those, <laughs> it's one of those things. Uh, yeah, you guys should watch it. They're not paying me to say this, so I'm just throwing it out there. Dude, I love that humor. I still, I've toned it down a lot um, because if, if you don't, it frankly just frightens people who've never been in the military. It does. Um, even some people who've been in, because I think when you go to combat, it gets real. It gets a lot darker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it gets a lot darker, and, and oh my gosh, it's just. The things you can say to people, um, <laughs> it, uh, I don't know if I want to say any of it now. Like, I feel like I'm on the spot. But. Oh, no, dude. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's one of those things to where we play this back and forth, right? Like, I've seen it all the time with panels, okay? Because I will I do speaking engagements, and I'll be a panelist or whatever. And it's like, okay, am I going to come off as crazy person? Or am I going to come off as, like... A humorous, crazy person. Like, yeah, he's a little <laughs> fucked up. But, you know, some of that stuff that he said, it was really funny. You know what I mean? Like, maybe maybe we could go there. Kind of a deal. You know? Right. Um, like a Jim Jeffries sort of thing. Yeah. You know? Or maybe maybe a little maybe a little Louis C.K. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A little a little Louis. Uh, a little Louis C.K. every once in a while. A little, a little dry about the fucked up nature uh, and the irony that you find in the military as a whole and uh yeah. the fucked up nature of the world like you're i don't think people truly understand the 85 percent illiteracy rate amongst the afghan ranks that we were dealing with people who were wearing multiple watches simply for decoration and show they'd bang heroin all night and each other uh man boy smoking. thursdays is a thing yeah um, smoking pot smoking pot and the uh or hash in the uh, observation posts. Oh, yeah. Well, in <laughs> Suike, remember Suike? That fucked up, like, weird green insulation dip that they used to shove in their lip all the time? It was like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, it was heinous. Their lips, yeah, make, make you bleed. It had, like, glass bits in it. <laughs> Yeah, it's gross. Yeah. Every morning at right around 720-ish, uh, the guys, so we're in PB Gumbadi, which was a shithole unto itself, but from the post, from like, I want to say it was post one that overlooked the gate, all the Afghan males would come out, they would squat, they would pee, and then they would wipe their dick with a rock. And... It was very interesting. I was like, what do the women do? So like I, it was, you know, there are curiosities uh, that are going on. I and I, I, I think that the uh, conditions that you're in, not just combat, but like, you know, you could die of exposure. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's that. <laughs> You know, so there's that, like, yeah. there's the dark sense of humor that comes with anybody who's ever gone through, uh, 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 I want to say an adverse situation, but um, it's a survival situation where you're actively and aggressively hunting somebody also. So you've kind of got to, like, you can sleep when you're dead. Come on. You know, let's kind of got to play yeah. that game. Hey, hey, bud. Yeah, we got to keep our helmet on the whole patrol. <laughs> yeah, I know it's hot. I'm wearing the same stuff. Actually, I'm wearing more than you because you won't carry extra ammo. You don't yeah. know what I'm saying. Super. <laughs> <laughs> yep and that's yeah. about 95 percent of patrol like don't yep. look look over there you fucking son of a bitch like you have a machine gun just shoot that. Point, just point just lay down behind it the way that we've been doing this i mean come on man and you know he's picking fruit you know they like set the gun down and then like start picking dates yeah. or whatever you're just like what the fuck yeah. are you doing what are you yeah. god damn it we're supposed to get be... on the get on their phone. <laughs> yeah, they'll show you porn in the middle of a patrol. You know, from a some... '90s from a '90s Nokia, it's all right. Pixelated. You're like, is this all censored? Right. What is what is this? <laughs> Jav oh, exclusives. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> we had this downright comical display once. Um, because it. <sighs> 
our, the house we lived in wasn't, it was like as tall as a two story, but it wasn't a two story, if that makes sense. It just mm-hmm. had really tall ceilings. Um, I guess for show, they couldn't afford to put that second floor in. Um, but there were stairs that went to the roof. Um, and so whenever, you know, whenever there's a firefight, inevitably people go to the roof because it's the highest point. You can see the most stuff. Um, and uh, so we were all up on the roof because some part of our little PB had been getting shot at. Um, and <laughs> out in the distance because we're on the radios you know like you should be and they tell us they're like hey fyi going across the north is a a police patrol okay cool roger and then not even we see them and we point them out right we're like oh hey guys police and i don't know what the fuck they were thinking we were saying like point and you would just say police and that means shoot <laughs> but all the fucking handcuffs started shooting at these guys and i'm not talking like a couple of pop shots like you know pkm's going off this dude's lobbing those 37 mic mics from oh, the geez. ak's like they're going to t- and we're in a residential area <laughs> like and so he's coming way short because these guys are like like 600 meters out or something probably further than that they're way out there and so these you know these freaking grenades are coming short and just landing inside of compounds Jeez. and we're just on the roof and we're just like we're like see we're like stop 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 we're like trying to get these guys to stop and they're like looking at us like like we got dicks coming out of our heads and they're like they're like no we're shooting it's cool and we're like <laughs> no we're like those are afghan police afghan police <laughs> and we they finally uh, got the hit. Uh, they shot at him for a good like thirty seconds. <laughs> We're like, oh my god. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Well, it being shot at the one PKM seven sixty by five four rimmed with any type of rate of fire is one of those things where it's enough to make you pucker. But to have somebody unload on you like that is a little bit frightening, depending on the circumstances. See, well, the I- Afghans just shoot. Right. They don't they don't need confirmation of any sort. They're not you know, we, we try not to blow civilians away. You know, it does happen in this line of work and we're real sorry, but we try not to. Right. <laughs> the Afghans don't care. <laughs> right. It's weird. It's like uh, you would think it would be a little bit the other way around. I'm just because, you know, they're neighbors. Right. This is your countrymen, bro. No, they're not. <sighs> I'm from the north. Fuck those guys. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. We had, did you ever meet Joey, the interpreter? Did you ever meet Joey? No, I don't think so. Joey, like the, you know, average Afghan male over there uh, due to malnourishment is rather slight or was. And uh, Joey, we just always knew was fucking bad. He was terrible. And we had another interpreter who, you know how it is, you rotate guys through the ranks and they don't really know who that person is, but they're telling you like, hey man, your terp is not saying what you're saying, you know, and stuff like that. And so he was, you know, he was one of those guys who was telling me like, your terp's not saying what you're saying. And I'm like, oh shit. So I'm like, okay, uh, what's my next course of action? So we did one of those things where it was like, let's rotate him out. Let's see if he pulls this shit anywhere else in the AO, what happens, rotate him back, whatever. So Joe. Joey rotates back. And I already don't like Joey. I'm not going to take him on patrol. We told him we're not going to take him on patrol, but we're going to have eyes on Joey. And every time I saw Joey and he wanted to go on patrol, I was like, you should probably just hang yourself. All right. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Adios. You know, and just <laughs> like every time I saw him, it was a suggestion on how he could potentially kill himself because we knew the guy was goddamn terrorist, right? It was one of those where it was like, we know what you're yeah. doing kind of a deal. And he yeah. wasn't allowed in the COC. None of our Terps were. There was nobody else aside from Marine or Sailor personnel who was lo- authorized in there, right? And he always kept trying to get into the COC and he always kept trying to talk to the police commander and all of these other things. And finally, it came down the line. It was... And, you know, this, I was not a part of this. This happened after we left. Uh, But it finally came down the line that Joey is a terrorist and we're going to fly his ass off to like Kandahar, wherever the fuck we were taking people at that point. And, uh, and when they came in to get Joey, well, okay, quick little side story. So when they rotated him out, I told him that he needed to have a military haircut. So we gave him a military haircut, but I needed to trim (laughs) a few different things up. And so when he left, uh, he did have a cock and ball shaved into his head. I mean, it looked really good, but it was, uh, probably inappropriate at best. And it was one of those where he walked around with it for a good three to five days uh, before realizing that, you know, he had a penis in his head and he needed us to shave it off. And it was fantastic. And we had a good time laughing about that. So, <clears throat> you know, it was one of those things that I was really happy that we found out he was a terrorist. And so one day they came in and they said, uh, you know, again, we had left and they came in and said, Joey, pack all your shit. You're leaving. 
You're going home. It's going to be fantastic. You're going on leave. And, you won the uh, war. It's going to be great. Right. Hey. <laughs> You get the Medal of Honor, son. And so they <laughs> put him and all of his shit onto a helicopter, and they flew his ass straight to prison. And, <laughs> and there he went to, you know, get due processed or used as a hole punch or whatever. I mean, I don't know whatever happened to Joey, but uh, yeah, poor little guy. One of those things. Poor little guy. I almost <laughs> saw. I almost saw a police commander execute a man. I was pretty sure that was. That was that was kind of frightening in its own special way. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Cuz there was like this loud there's like this crazy commotion um outside and one of the cops had been like smoking opium like you know you're going to smoke weed I guess but at least you're kind of functional but you smoke opium you're not functional like like you're, right. <laughs> you're like you're gone. <laughs> And so this dude is like, he's getting pulled in by one of our, uh, like, you know, we did have some pretty good cops every now and then. And so he's like, he's like, this guy is just so out of it, you know? And we're like, yeah, obviously. Um, hey bro, you know, are you all right? <laughs> and so we go get the, um, police commander and we're like, sir, uh, this, there's a situation that you need to check out. And so he comes out and he takes one look at this dude and just yells something, but I'm guessing it was. You're fucking dead. Get everybody in formation. They're all going to watch you die. Um, <laughs> and so they all get in formation and they're all just like locked and cocked, like every one of them, like a perfect formation. Um, and this, this commander has this dude out front and he's just yelling at him, just screaming at him and yelling at these guys and yelling at this dude. And then he pulls out his pistol and he starts pointing at this guy. <laughs> and at this point, we're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> What does the rule book say? Because we're in charge of them, but we're not really in charge of them. We're just kind of guiding them. Right. <laughs> uh, and we're like, how are we going to, how are, you know, four E4s going to explain to the entire chain of command above us how this guy executed this dude in front of us and we let it happen? <laughs> like, is that okay? Are we okay with this? <laughs> and so that was a real nerve wracking moment. He didn't shoot that guy, luckily. But it was real scary for that brief moment where we yeah. thought he was going to. That escalated rather quickly. Yeah. And then we were worried about the ramifications of uh, – because the Afghans don't do anything light. Like he's not going to just shoot this dude once in the head. He's going to shoot him in the head and then he's going to shoot his body like six more times, right? He's going to shoot it till the mag's empty. And so now we're worried about, all right, one one shot is an ND, all right? Two shots is an ND from a machine gun. Three shots is a firefight. Is Alpha Company going to think there's a firefight over here and just start lighting everything up? <laughs> so oh, that was another man. That was another fear we had. But that's a good time. Yep. No big deal. Just no big another deal. day at the office. Gotta love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we're, yeah. we're no longer writing about all of those adventure. Well, maybe, yeah, we will do some writings about those. But the adventure stories that you're doing now and you're linking up with all of these buddies, man, I mean, it's fantastic. Your ability to tell a story. I've read some of your different work. I'm looking forward to pointing you towards other connections that we've been published by and uh, and see where this thing goes. So now, have all right. Quick little thing, and I don't really care what you <laughs> what you have to say about it. But I didn't know if if you've been using the five paragraph business plan at all. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Because because I'm a shitty friend. Um, no, it's totally fine. No, I, I have it. <laughs> no worries, man. Haven't no worries. It up, uh, but it's, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, dude, it's it's no problem at all. It's one of those things to where it's like we offer it up as cigars and sea stories to our different given guests, especially folks who are looking to get bigger and bolder as far as their entrepreneurial endeavors and stuff like that. We talk offline about business and all sorts of different stuff in different capacities. Frankly, the majority of our conversations are these. They're sharing sea so. stories and hanging out and BS. And anytime you and I are on the phone, it's always good. I enjoy reminiscing with you. You're a good yeah, dude. I try to be. Right? Well, I mean, it's just kind of part of your personality. It's one of those things. And you're also, I mean, you're a family man, you know? So, yeah. so that's the thing right now. I'm kind of like Congress. It's summertime. I'm in recess. Once the kids go back to school, I'll pick right. up your book then. <laughs> right. Oh, dear God. Right. So it's daddy daycare duties. It's a lot of time during the day working on this, you know, ongoing potential publication where you're going with it doing adventure stories and i mean uh, remind remind the folks listening again where can we find you online what are some of your different links and stuff like that um currently we're, we're primarily based on uh facebook i'm um, just searching onward expedition um we're funny i think at least entertaining we have good pictures so there that's all we have right now is that what you want to hear gosh sure <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> 
Well, and I'm encouraging folks to check out Onward Expedition yeah. also as, you know, another place where, you know, I'm one of these guys to where any chance that I have the ability to build another community, seek fellowship, you know, is like yeah. the easiest way to put it. And yeah. I'm an active guy. I'm an outdoor adventure type guy. I really like where you're going with this, you know, and it feels like a lot of people are doing, oh, we're going to do this adventure type thing. And it's got a different flavor to it as far as getting together and doing the whole story bit, which definitely coincides with our mission with cigars and sea stories, getting together, smoking a joke and hanging out reminiscing over good times, stuff like that. So keep going, man. Keep going. Keep chugging along. Keep bringing the the kick ass images for all that they're yeah. worth. For all that they're worth. Well, Rowan, if, though, <laughs> if for nothing else, continue to share sea stories. We certainly appreciate them. Yeah, absolutely. Fucking it. Well, cool, dude. Right on, folks. If you haven't already done so, check out Onward. Onward, right? Expedition. Yep. Onward Expedition. Check them out. They're on Facebook. When you're on Facebook, check out Cigars and Sea. It's just at Cigars and Sea. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Go ahead, like the page, follow us on Twitter. You can see our quotes and quips and all sorts of different little things on there. Five paragraph business plan, which my fucktard buddy hasn't even fucking checked out yet. This son of a bitch. Uh, you're an accident. Uh, what a- Parents what don't even is. love you. You should probably go play in traffic. Now, our listeners know that fiveparagraph.com is the place <laughs> to go to get your five paragraph business plan. And the book is available now on Amazon. Uh, if you're like us and you know the operations order, just go to fiveparagraph.com. The template's free. You can call an advisor. That's free. When you complete the call, you'll get a free workbook. And all of the online tutorials are free. So it's one of those things to where it's like, how do you actually take the op order and turn it into a business plan? We did it. Boom. And the book is only, it's $14.95, available now on Amazon. Get it. Thank you so much to our sponsors, Heroes Media Group, Spartan Media, and VeteransList.us. They are collaborators at Heroes Media Group, awesome network, fantastic editing staff. They're also offering transcription services now. So check them out. People are lining up, man. It's They offer a lot of really good rates as far as that's concerned. So check out Heroes Media Group. Spartan Media does a fantastic job as far as websites. Also, Jeremy Knopf, who I was just so honored to be on his podcast. Uh, he's doing a digital marketing podcast, which is just fantastic. The guy is top-notch. He's a fellow Marine. He's a fellow infantryman, and he's doing great work with a lot of different industries. Uh, but he's a stellar individual. So I'll be sure to post that into the Scars and Sea Series listener group when it does pop up. And last but certainly not least, VeteransList.us, which has over 185,000 featured businesses that are on there. Now, if you would like to get what's called a featured membership, uh, that's, you know, your top of the list to serve as SEO within their own system. You're getting noticed and recognized. They're pushing different connections and other various things. Veteranslist.us is a great way to earn credibility. And if you want to get a featured membership on there for 50% off, enter in discount code Cigars and C and you will get half off a featured membership. So go ahead, check that out. It's veteranslist.us. Ammon, you got any last words for these fine folks? Any, maybe words of wisdom, anything like that? What do you, oh, what yeah. do you, what do you think? Um, what do you think? Uses just, for an MRE spoon aside from MREs. Uh, have you ever gotten an e-tool kill? Uh, maybe just give us a war cry. I mean, there's a number of different options here for our fine I, listeners. Yeah, I think the best advice that you can give anybody is, you know, be excellent to each other. I Classic like Bill that. and Ted, you know. I like that. I'm, I'm, I like that. Be excellent with to each other. Be excellent to each other. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right, folks. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. Ammon, I love you, bro. Take care. Be Thanks, well. Thanks, man. Semper Fi. Love you too. Rock. Chill. And on that note, we cue the music. <laughs>